So this month's global exploration of death is chosen by our Miami chapter and illustrated by Sid Wheeler. So death, kind of a heavy topic. But death has inspired humanity since time immemorial, influencing ideologies and storytelling to our understanding of life and how we live it. To our ancient ancestors, the fear of death was a palpable and daily motivator. Although our world is infinitely safer than it was centuries ago, it is. <laughs> we are still driven by the fear of death, and we expertly attribute it to even the smallest events. Traffic, deadlines, a mistake, public speaking, your boss's name on your caller ID on a Saturday. <laughs> what we have done well as a species is leverage the fear of death to inspire achievements that seemed impossible and to create work that needed to be made and discover insights that help us live well. So we're getting to our speaker, Anne Marie Kramer. She was born in upstate New York, raised in Cleveland, and she followed the sunshine to California 10 years ago. Once here, she saw the market in Sacramento was open for yoga studios and open Zuda Yoga here in Midtown. Anne Marie's passion is teaching, and since 2006, Zuda has trained close to 500 teachers who teach around the world. And when you're in a conversation with Anne Marie, there is no one else in the room. She makes a strong point of seeing people, and when she's listening to you, she's listening, <laughs> and you feel the strength of her gaze and the woman behind it. Her intensity is balanced by her grace and insight, and I am so happy to have her here today. Everyone, please welcome Anne Marie Kramer. Good morning. Thank you so much for inviting me. Uh, I've been coming here for the last six months, and each time I come here, I leave completely inspired. I'm like, I always have a new idea or some way to see the world differently that I can bring back to Zuda and my community. So thank you for all that you're doing in Sacramento and across the world to, to make the world a better place. Um, so yeah, I'm from Zuda Yoga. I don't know how to work this thing like this, okay? Yeah, I'm Anne Marie Kramer. I'm from Zuda Yoga. And we're talking about death. And it's interesting that we're talking about death because there's two things that most people are really, really afraid of. One is death, and two is public speaking. <laughs> and believe it or not, people are more afraid of public speaking than death. So what I gather from that is that you guys in the audience would rather be dead than up here. <laughs> I can feel that. <laughs> but death, you know, like, I, th I thought about death, and when they, they brought up the idea of me speaking on death, I was like, yes, I'll take death. There was many different topics to choose from, pioneer, I was like, I could do that. And like, death, I'm like, I'm a yes for death. And I know that sounds a little crazy, that sounds a little crazy, but I really believe that death is a catalyst for change. And as a creative, and I know that everyone in this room is a creative, if you're here, you're drawn to this, that we have to embrace the dark side. We have to embrace death. And we associate death with losing a loved one, with um, letting go, things like that but we have to be able to associate or, or to embrace the dark side in order to be creative, in order to be the light. You know, the dark and the light, they go together. So I moved here more than 10 years ago now. I say 10 years, but it's really been about 13. And what brought me to, to yoga was I was 24 years old and I was living in, in and out of Florida and Cleveland and my parents, they died, both of them. And uh, it was one of the most tragic things that ever happened to me. My mom was like one of those people, she was 4'11", and like, she was the coolest person ever. Like, you, anywhere you went, you just knew that she just didn't care what anyone thought. I don't know where, you know, I might have got a little bit of that from her. <laughs> but, uh, you know, she would smoke Eve Light 120 cigarettes, and she didn't know how to inhale, so she would just puff on them, and then she would scream at me at the same time with a cigarette in her mouth. And she was just like this vibrant woman. And she was never sick a day in her life, and then she got cancer, and she died. Six months, it was just like, boom, motherless. Well, my father just followed suit. Six months, he drank himself to death six months later. And so here I am, 24, alone. You know, like really alone. Like, what do you do, you know? 
I mean, I think I have a daughter now who's 23. Like, man, what if she was without her parents at that young age where you're just so, like, impressionable. Like, you don't know what to do with your life. So I did what any normal 23, 24-year-old did. I did a lot of cocaine. <laughs> and I drank myself into oblivion and just completely numbed out. Like, I couldn't handle the tragedy of losing my parents. And I'll never forget this morning where I, I you know, did what any person who's doing cocaine does. There's never enough cocaine. <laughs> you know, I slept with a drug dealer to get more cocaine. And I, I remember, like, laying on the floor, looking over at an end table with lines of cocaine, like, laying on the end table. And I just remember this moment of going, like, this is not my life. This is not how it's going to go down. Like, this is, this, no, no, this is no. This is a no. And in that moment, I, I got myself up, and I don't know what, I don't know if it was God, I imagine it was God who just came in and said, there's more, there's more than this. And I could have very easily continued down that path, and many people do, and there's a great loss in our lives, many people fall down that path, and they go down that destruction, they follow that destruction. But something inside of me woke up. I was in college, I changed my major to exercise physiology, I said, I'm going to get healthy. My parents were smokers and drinkers and all those things. I'm like, I'm going to get healthy. And so I decided to go into exercise physiology. So I went into exercise physiology, and only by the grace of God, they said, you know, you can't just work out and, you know, lift weights and run. You have to do something outside of this. And I said, well, I have this really cute chiropractor, and he's going to yoga. <laughs> yoga. I'm going to go to yoga. So the only reason I started going to yoga was because there was a cute chiropractor going to yoga. And uh, so thus, here I am 20 years later <laughs> teaching yoga. So thank God for that moment. But, and really, and it was that. It was like these moments that you don't understand what's happening to you are the catalyst for what, what moves you forward. So I changed my whole life. You know, in that moment, I changed my whole life. I decided to get healthy. I decided to take care of myself and to, and to make that my mission to help take care of others. So here we are 20 years later, and Zuda Yoga is, you know, family to so many people in a place where you can come in your darkness and move towards your light. Okay, death, there we go. So I want to talk about three things with death today. And there's three ideas that I think are really important with death. And one is letting go, right? It's the ultimate letting go. Death is the ultimate letting go. And two, what comes out of death is rebirth, right? And then the third thing I'd like to talk about today is karma. You know, if, as a yoga teacher, this is what you're going to get when you get when we talk about death. Letting go, rebirth, and then why we're here, what the karma is that brought us all here. So, letting go. And I love this, this picture because... A lot of times when we think about letting go, it's like letting go, letting go. Oh, no, grasping. You know, we're grasping, we're grasping, we're holding on to so many things, and that's where our pain comes from, is holding on. And so this picture is there's a balance of what do you see? The light and the dark, right? The balance of the light and the dark. Because when we let go, we can make room for something else. And, you know, it's like we have to let go. We have to let go because the world is changing all the time. And we take it so seriously. You know, we take it so seriously. I know I do. There are times where I get mad at my kids for doing things, and I'm like, really? Really? Does that really matter that they're taking their, their cups of water and doing this and splashing all over the counter? Does it really matter? But I'll... I'll it matters. Like, there's this, it matters to me, you know? I'm so freaking wound tight that it matters, you know? And I'm like, in those moments, I'm like, don't take life so serious, right? No one gets out alive anyway. You know, like, we don't get out alive. And at the end of the day, we have to let go of those little moments so that we can make room for better moments. And as a creative... You know, like we have a team, we have a leadership team, and it, 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 I love our leadership team because it's like thick skins, right? You, you, we go in there and it's like always about ideas. We're always like trying to innovate and create things. And, you know, you know that saying, there are no stupid questions, there are no stupid, 
we don't, we don't, no, that's stupid. Like, <laughs> like, like ideas come up like, that is a terrible idea. Like, no, no, that's not happening. And, and that's the, the way we roll in our team is like, we, we, we know each other so well and we are so confident in who we are that we can let go of ideas really quickly. We can go, oh, okay, I see your point. That is really not a great idea. And then we move on and then we make space for even better ideas because we're not attached to this being my idea, this being her idea and it moving a certain way. There's a, there's a, there's a constant letting go in our team of, what's working and what's not working. And I, and I hope that you guys all feel that in your own creativity, like you have these ideas and you think, you know, you have them like, I don't know, maybe you're running one day or you're doing whatever you're doing and you have this idea and you're like, this is so brilliant. I'm, I'm gonna retire from this. This is gonna make, this, this, the world is gonna change. And you tell someone, they're like, uh, uh, I don't know, I think that, right? And then you're like, oh, so deflated. And then what? Okay, next. <laughs> Moving on. And then you keep throwing them out there until they stick. You know, but we can't do that unless we can let go. Unless we can let go of our ego and all the things that came before. You know, it's, it's like when we have ideas that don't work out, we see them as failures. Has anyone ever, how many of you have failed in here? That's it. Like, it's, that, that's, that's, the, that's the job of a creator, is to fail over and over again. Okay? Winston Churchill said, the key to success is moving from one failure to the next without losing enthusiasm. You know, our life is just, it's all lessons. And we let go, we take, we take the lesson, and then we let go, and we move on, and we keep going. And that's the key to success, is being able to let go. And then we get to rebirth. And this is Lord Shiva. And if you come to our studio in Midtown, you'll see Lord Shiva doing his cosmic dance, right? And this world is, it's a dance. And this world, and the Shiva represents creation and destruction. This constant moving of creating and destroying. Creating and destroying. And everyone's like, why is he standing on a baby? <laughs> The baby is the ego. And Lord Shiva is standing on our ego, saying that we must be in this, this cosmic dance of creation and destruction. It's the only way to let things go so new things can be, be rebirthed. And, and you guys are constantly doing it. And you know as, a, as a, a creative, you have to be constantly innovative. Like at Zuda Yoga, like we are constantly like innovation, innovation, innovation keeps us fresh. Right? It keeps you fresh. It keeps you fresh. If you don't stay fresh, you, st you fall behind. You become irrelevant. You know, I'm, I'm of the older generation, and, you know, I kick and scream at this Instagram, Facebook bullshit. I'm like, God damn it, can't we just talk? <laughs> can't we just hang out? I'll just, like, just hang out and see each other and be together. Do I have to freaking put makeup on and look cute and take a picture in my best yoga pose ever, and then people will come to my class? Yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. And, you know, that's been created. That's, that's what we live in. We live in this world where Instagram and Facebook are, are mediums for people to connect at this point, you know? I mean, yoga will always be there for the, the real connection, but that's, that's the whole thing, idea of rebirthing and and letting go and being able to be in that creation and destruction, being able to let go of what doesn't work and continually like move towards the light, move towards what's powerful. So just take a moment, just sit up tall in your seat, close your eyes. And just think of one thing that, that you have right now that's really powerful in your life. It doesn't have to be work-related. It could be children. 
relationship. Something that's really, really vibrant, that's juicy. Notice if there's a direct correlation to something you had to let go of in order for that to happen. Maybe you didn't want to let go of that thing, but maybe it was taken from you. But this is the cosmic dance, guys. This is it. And then turn to somebody, look them in the eye, look to somebody next to you. Don't say anything. Shh. Just look that. Look at them. Look at them just for a moment without talking. And then just say, I love you. (laughs) I had to do something like that, you know? All my friends were like, tell me though, Amory, like as you do this presentation, how are you gonna say the word vagina? And I was like, I don't know how I'm going to say the word vagina, but it's going to come in. And so, I, I, I mean, I had to say, because vagina always makes people laugh. And uh, it is where we were created from. So, the ultimate rebirth of the vagina. <laughs> All right. Um, so, because of that, so you have something beautiful in your life because you, you let go of something else. Yes? Did everyone, did everyone find that? Yeah. So rebirth, the cosmic dance. Okay, this was my rebirth. (laughs) So I thought it, this was the hardest thing for me to do. I resisted until the last moment to do this. Um, this, (laughs) Obviously this is me young. You see my son in this picture a lot. And uh, this is me in high school. I, uh, I borrowed my friend's Porsche to take this picture because I knew that I wanted more out of my life than the, the cars that my father and mother were driving. So this is me in a Porsche. And uh, well, I don't even know what to say about that span of my life, but thank God I've rebirthed from there. But it was very, very fun right there. Um, so you can see that you have to let go of certain ways of being in your life in order to recreate who you are today. <laughs> All right. All right. So the last one I want to talk about is karma. It is believed that at the moment of death, that when we all die, the moment that our of our consciousness, what our conscious state is, like how we feel about ourselves, how we feel about the life that we have lived, is how we are born into the next world. So if we go to death kicking and screaming, and you've seen people do this, yes, where they're not ready to die, and they're fighting, and they're angry, and you can't talk to them. Some of them even go into delusion. We know that when we die at that, con- that moment of consciousness, that's the next life that we are, li- we are born into. So we have to make some changes, right? Like this, our whole life, our whole cosmic dance is preparing us to die because we are all going to die. Like, no one gets out alive. And in yoga, what's so beautiful about the practice of yoga, we, you know, yoga is a six-day-a-week six day a six day week practice. And at the end of every single class, we have a pose. What's it called? Shavasana. Shavasana. What does that pose say? What does it mean? Corpse pose. So what I love about yoga is it's preparing us to die. 
We let go of the practice. We let go of everything in our life, and we lay there, and we're just at one with the universe. We let our essential nervous system calm the fuck down, and we let go. Even if it's just for 30 seconds, one minute, two minutes, five minutes, whatever it is, we let go. And then we roll over to the side. And what position is that? Fetal position. Because then we are born again with a new mind, with a fresh mind. That's why yoga has been so powerful in my life because I've had so many deaths. Not just like people dying, but just life changes. Change is death. And so our whole life is preparing us to die for that ultimate death. So when we get there, we're good. We're good. We were in Bali a, f- a few weeks ago, and uh, we got there, and there's this volcano, <laughs> and it was threatening to erupt. And it was the first time I left my family, you know, the first time I went and led a retreat without my family, and since I've had a family, and every time I call my husband, he's like, you, this is cancel a retreat, just this is not worth it, this volcano is going to erupt, there's going to be a tsunami, you're going to die, and the kids, and, da, 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 and I'm just like, Puh. <laughs> then I'm in Bali, and everyone's like, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, the volcano might, not, might erupt, but we're, we're, we're safe, just be in the moment, you're fine. So, you know, like every day, like I would do these death meditations, I would lay in my bed, it's on the second floor, in the middle of the night, I hear, there goes another one of the earthquakes, wake me up out of bed. You know, every night I was woken up through earthquake after earthquake. And I would lay there, and I, I literally got to the point where I was like, I'm good. You know, if I go now, I'm good. Will it be hard on my family, like, to leave my children? Oh, my God, yes. Do I want to go now? No, I don't want to go now. But I literally took myself to the place of, I'm good. I've had an amazing life. I've had an amazing life because I know that that moment of consciousness is going to take me to the next life. And I want to be born driving a Tesla in my next life. (laughs) So I want to go out peaceful, very, very peaceful. (laughs) It's truth. So yeah, so your whole life is preparing you to die. So just notice every time you grasp on something, that grasping, that holding on to, like what that is for you, what that attachment is. <sighs> die with no regret, guys. Die with no regret. No regret. And the first one, take 100% responsibility for your life. 100%. That means for how much you weigh, what relationship you're in, how much is in your bank account, what you're putting into your body. Every single thing, you, me, we are responsible for ourselves. And where we are placing blame is where we are losing our power, where we're giving our power away. And when you don't take responsibility for yourself, then you go, then when you when you go to die, you're like, ah, it's everybody's fault. <laughs> the doctors, they're not healing me. Well, you've put shit in your body for the last 60 years. What do you expect? You've put shit in your mind for the last, you know, it's your mind. Like, take responsibility for yourself. 100%. Just take a moment right now. Close your eyes. Is there a place in your life right now that you're blaming someone for a situation that you're in? I know I am. I have blames. And can you in this moment, this moment, take responsibility for that? And what is the answer? Yes. Say it. Yes. 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 Lift your knee up. Yes. yes. <laughs> <There you> go. <laughs> Live awake. Be awake. Number two, trust yourself. 
Trust yourself. Trust your heart. Not, not in your mind all the time. The mind will tell you all kinds of crazy things, but give yourself daily time every day. Get quiet with yourself. And if you don't have an active meditation practice, you know, go for a walk in nature without your headphones, without music playing, without music in the car. And listen, when the more you listen to yourself, the more you trust yourself. We're so busy, we're so inundated with things, so many things, so many electronics that we get confused on what our truth is. Shiny, shiny. Oh, I want this, I want that. Take time for you to listen to you. And the more you listen to you, the more you trust you, the more you know you, the more you love you. And then you can be you. And when you live this world being you unapologetically, there's no regrets. There's no regrets. Last one, take risks. You hear it every day, like every manifesto. Is do some one thing that scares you every day. You know, put yourself out there. Put yourself out there to be afraid and do it anyway. Because our comfort zone, man, it's sweet poison, that comfort zone, right? Oh, it feels so good when everything's so safe. It's like, oh, it's like my comforter cover and my pillow that I put over my face when I sleep. It's like, oh, it's so good, right? It's poison, though. You can enjoy that comfort for a little while and then break out of it. Because if we don't constantly push our comfort zone, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And you know that. You have grandparents. I had a grandmother who, wouldn't, who, who got to the point where she was too afraid to drive her car because she wasn't pushing her comfort zone. She wasn't stepping out and doing things that are like, I don't like that. Do it. Be scared and do it any freaking way. And hang out with people that are up to cool shit. You know, like seriously, hang out with people that are doing that, that are gonna push you and say, you got this. You got this. You might fail, yeah, but I, I will be with you. I will hold your hand. I will go down with you, and I will pull you back up. But you got this. Yes? Yes. Yes! yes. <laughs> Reflection. We did this a little bit earlier. I want you to take that idea. Write it down, a thing that you can let go of to make room for something new. Every day do that, every day, every day. This life is, it's a gift. It's going by very, very quickly. We're all gonna die. We're all gonna die. Life's a bitch, then you die. <laughs> <laughs> No, just kidding. <laughs> um, but really, really live your life. Live your life so you're not afraid to die. So when you get there, when you get to that precious moment, that precious moment where you truly become one with the universe, you're ready. You're ready. You're ready. Thank you.